we are making an extremely aggressively ribbed swim bait. I'm thinking the ribbing is going to be about that far apart, but deep all the way to this line. Probably thought of that as the lateral line. That's what I'm, it's going to be deep, I tell you. We'll still have plenty of meat in the head for the twist lock. That's all going to be solid plastic. This is going to be pretty sweet. I was just out fishing this morning and I was craving something with some aggressive ribbing. This will hit the spot. <laughs> okay, I'm done. That's it. That's it for this video when it comes to that. Sorry. I think I'm gonna go all the way to the back with it though. Holy freaking smoke, man. That's pretty crazy. Piece of plastic, not piece of plastic. Piece of plastic, not. They're that big? No, no, no. I need that. That's not going nowhere. I mean, I probably need all of that. Let's stop the ribbing. You know what I'm gonna have to do? That. I have to do that. So this tail can actually catch water and kick. I need full support. Right on. The weather got kind of good out. Not even good, just kind of good. And it sent me on a bit of a fishing spree. For my Sunday uploads, I got like two days to make this. Made a copy. Those gills, I might want to have copies of that for later carving. Carving later. A lot of what I've been saying is backwards today. Floor's an okay spot for that, I don't care. That was my bedroom growing up. The floor is an okay spot for that. <laughs> I'm gonna get this piece of paper right up flush with the edge of the piece of wood. This is a jointed surface. Can you say that or do you have to say I went over this surface with the jointer? I don't know. I'm gonna say this is a jointed surface. It will be important, whoa, backwards, to follow this line perfectly all the way back to there and down and have full support from that bottom piece. Cause when I have to cut that, that'll be the challenging part. And then the meet up flush with each one of those ribs from a different angle on a bandsaw. Challenge accepted. Tough guy over here. So that is all that I needed. That'll give me nice support to cut up here later. I can make a mess of things on this now. And just get to hacking all of that material out of there. Oh, there's my thumb again. feel like I put enough. I don't know, fellas. Does that look lined up to you? I think I might need to be doing this backwards on the bandsaw. Like I need to be where you guys are almost. That way I can actually see from this angle and line the blade up with the cut that already exists. I'm gonna redefine these lines on the top too, one second. Redefined, looking sharp. And if you guys didn't know, ribbing, it serves a function on lures. It slows the descent and makes stuff happen during the descent which at times can be the most tantalizing thing ever for fish. So this is gonna be pretty sweet. It's always good to justify weird stuff that you do. I'm real close to you guys right now. Let's not make this awkward. Why is this rock? Oh my goodness. So uh, this surface that this is glued to has been jointed, but that one wasn't. Whoopsie doopsie. You know what? I'm gonna send this across the joiner and just hope that it's the right squareness to this stuff. So this this was just glued to this too, and I'm, I'm running this across the joiner. Is this bad? I'm not gonna put my hands in there. Don't worry. No more wibble wobble. Let us check the line up -ageness. My eyeball cannot discern a discrepancy. I think we're gonna be all right here in the USA. That just matched up with the lyrics of the song that's playing in the background, that was weird. So just taking a quick look at that, I think I'm safer. One sec, let me go get my pointy thing. The first cut's a little deeper than what I just did because then I can just sand that out and there's less to sand. So if anything, stay a little extra off the lines.
Once right at the end, I slipped and just cut the head off. So I had a sneaky suspicion that those lines I drew from the top profile were gonna be way too thin. So I put it on a fatter piece of wood and I'm liking the fatter piece of wood. I want a super ribbed round body. That's exciting. Cause you know it's still gonna have good action because everything's connected by a much thinner piece. It's gonna be so flappy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes Tupelo wood smells like Poncheros, and it's only sometimes. Usually it doesn't, but this piece does. Time to not break bait while I pull these pieces apart. Super glue might not have been ideal, nor is a sharp chisel to try to get this loose. All right, we broke the tail off. I might have used too much glue. Oh. Yeah, that was too much. Took off a little piece with it. I'll just make the gills nice and structured and carve a lot down there, it'll look good. Those are all those lines I have to clean up, get everything flush. That's gonna take a while, cause I'm just gonna use a little micro file and my hand and these two fingers and just, it's gonna be like this for a while, fellas. Here is the sized hook I intend to use for this bait. I'm thinking for this one, this one, and this one, there shall be a slot. Easy to slip that big piece of lead through. Kind of slot, you know what I'm saying? That'll be the pattern that you pour into. What's inside of that penciled line? There's go gonna be a slight curve up the top and it's time to carve. This is annoying to carve, because you can't just push a straight, nice line and concentrate. It's like your concentration's getting broken constantly. See, that's nice to carve. I think when you hear that noise, that shh, that's the definition of carving. So conveniently enough, each of these spaces is a good this is the exact same thickness as this file, which leaves a really rough surface. I'll have to go back in and sand everything again still, but this helps. It's a tapered file too, so you can just like kind of slam it in there and twist it out and keep doing that. And then it kind of slowly grows to the right thickness. Man, if you listen close, everything's inappropriate. This makes a horrible noise when you sand it. It's making me cry. There, a tear is almost coming out of my eye. Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> I decided to just go ahead and do that. <laughs> Sand it back just a smidge. Now I can just put like a lip kind of thing on it. Should I go thicker than that? Maybe I should match the thickness of one of the ribs, you know? Something like that. I just have this stuff in my shop. That is way too thick. One sec, I'm gonna sand this down to the correct size tail. That's just too much. Drew a smaller circle. I like how it's a circle. We're gonna keep that. That meets up nice and flush. And now that's not ridiculous at all. That's perfect.
Every hour, I'm gonna do that three times. It's gonna be super smooth. That's a piece of scuffed up Lexan polycarbonate. And here's the wet lure. It's got polyurethane all over it. Still wet. We're just gonna, that's going to glue it to the Lexan polycarbonate. And it's also gonna give everything a very pleasing chamfer to the top. All right, I'm going for smooth. I think that just achieved it. I'm gonna put the polyurethane away. We're gonna let that dry. We're gonna make a mold out of that. I made like a Vaseline gasket too. I just super glued those joints. Okay, 20 ounces should be enough. So two ounces of this. Oh, it's been a while. Two ounces of this. Okay. You can pretty much see how it turned out before even opening it. That's cool. You can see there's plenty of room to pour the tail. No flashing, except up here at the nose where I accidentally sanded a little bit too much and it didn't meet flush with the Lexan. No big deal. Let's demold. Well, that came right off. The back of the mold's all bubbly because I did not degas it, but you don't need to degas a one piece. Laying flat on the table mold, all the gas rises. It gets out of there. Get all the hairs off of it because there's a bunch of hairs on it for some reason. That's weird. <laughs> all right, this thing, this thing is grabbing onto that silicone. I tell you. I would like to have a master that I can remold. It got loose. We're good. Wow. That polyurethane trick against the polycarbonate, as you can see, left a, an extremely clean edge. I can appreciate that. That's a puck of remelt chartreuse that I just melted. Didn't even degas it. I'm just gonna pour this once to get all the problems out of it, like little leftovers of grease or whatever that's in there. It's probably gonna be ugly. Yeah, it's all bubbly, but this will be our first look. Ooh. This is soft plastic. This is 142. Twisted a beast hook in there. Let's see how it rigs. If I just text posed that right there, you got a weedless, super floppy giving, collapsible, big sharp hook point ready to go into a fish. That is fantastic, man. This feels good. I like this. Blended. That's gonna look spiffy. I mean, that's pretty ideal. As you can see, no bubbles. The flake suspended nicely. There's holographic flake everywhere. And then a really bright chartreuse green pumpkin. Next, we have a nice, bright, beautiful chartreuse version. Sorry, wasn't even in frame for a D-mold. I'm slipping, man. Get out of there. That is bright. The tops are so flat because of all that ribbing and stuff to grab to. This is starting to become, in my mind, a potential go-to swim bait if it has a really good action. It's light. There's not a lot of plastic here. You can use a 6 aught, you can use an 8 aught beast hook, and that gives you a ton of different weight ranges. I think all the way up to half ounce of lead if you need this thing to go low. Or if you want to stay high, just use a light 6 aught beast hook. I hope it has a really good action. This might be the fish catcher right here, fellas. Good old green pumpkin, purple. Oh no. Oh, I was too soon. Ooh, that was still really hot. It tore just a smidget down in there, but it, it'll be fine. And that's a great color. Bright, but it's also not bright green. And a very natural purple. 
That's a good color, dude. This time it's had a good long while. That one looks even better. There's more purple. This one looks more fish catchy to me. Wow, we really got some winds whipping through here. Oh, the door just like squished me. We're gonna tie on a chartreuse one first. You know what? The action is kind of lacking, but that could be from the super soft plastic. I mean, it really flaps. Don't get me wrong. It's very slow moving too. It catches a lot of water and slowly moves around. That's kind of the vibe. You, you catching the vibe? This could be the preferred kind of action though for this time of the year. So yeah, that's what I'm working with. Well, we established that the plastic's probably just a bit too soft, but that's okay. I'm gonna go to a pond next. That's right, a pond. I'm really glad I brought my backpack because it's blocking a lot of wind. Okay, that action's quite a bit better. What the heck? I think the purple was a stiffer blend. That is an amazing action. That's really good. You can't see it as good because it's not bright chartreuse, but I'm happy with that. It's snowing. I think it's freezing rain, actually. One last pond. Wow, I found this bush. You just stand in front of a bush and it's, it's very nice. There's no wind at all. Looks like a hurricane out there, but it's, it's fine right here. I really wish it was a better time of the year because this thing's freaking awesome. Well, dang. I give it three weeks. Ponds will be on, bass will be biting. Not that anybody cares. Springtime engaged for around where I'm at. So I apologize if where you're at, it's already springtime and you're catching fish and this is lame. I'm bringing lameness down down south to your region, I'm sorry. Just a simple plane to see plainsman up here, as Coulter Wall would say. As for the bait, I guarantee you it will catch fish. I guarantee you, you'll see it again. And probably many thought that wind was gonna blow my garage down. The big door opened a little bit, even though I have it screwed shut. What's concludable? This bait has a ton of surface area, so much more than normal that it just, if it's in water, it's going to move slower wherever it's going. That's the feel I was getting. I approve of it. This is a useful bait to have, fuzzies and all. I'm excited to go to the ditch with this thing. On a kayak, and it be 70 degrees out. Until then, on to the next bait. Faces is a good, looking sharp. Is it really? Oh, is it exact? There's a bunch of hairs on it for some reason. That's exciting. And structured and good. I'm slipping, man. Yeah. It's gonna be like this for a while, fellas. Okay, I'm done.